ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पॉइंट्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम यू भगवान विष्णु हैज एश्योर्ड नारदा मद भक्ता यत्र गायंते तत्र तिष्ठा मी नारदा मीनिंग नारदा वेर एवर माई ड्यूट इज सिंग माई ग्लोरी आई एम ऑलवेज present there swami says i created this world for my own joy mountains rose up rivers started flowing earth and sky oceans and water bodies were formed the sun moon and deserts sprang up then the living beings were created man was given the first place and my knowledge was placed in his mind since the knowledge about god was already placed in the human mind man started singing his glory from that very moment he realized that by singing god's glory he can please him according to the saying Devanam priya stuti God is praised endlessly and it is going to remain so forever eternally In bhakti marga there are nine forms of devotion Among these the second form is kirtanam singing God's glory The devotee is new that through kirtanam one can win god's grace in order to cross this ocean of life easily so kirtanam acquired the second place in navavidha bhakti nine forms of devotion then in order to make the devotees understand the importance of singing god's glory Swami established the Pandari Bhajan group in his childhood itself. As a young boy, little Satya used to collect children of similar age group and teach them bhajans describing the glory of various names of God. This pandari bhajan group would carry symbols in hand wear jingles in their feet and go all over puttaparthi singing bhajans due to this not just in puttaparthi alone but in the surrounding villages also devotion sprang up in the hearts of elders the group was invited to sing bhajans in several villages and wherever they performed the villages protected from the spread of epidemics and people started developing faith in the power of kirtanam or singing the glory or bhajan swami has given us this easiest path of devotion nama smaran nama sankirtan millions of sai devotees from all over the world are singing god's glory and enjoying the bliss derived from it well here is an incident from mumbai which shows that wherever god's glory is sung he is present a couple who were devotees of swami used to visit various places to attend sai bhajans they felt that they should have a bhajan at their home so on good friday since it was a holiday they planned a bhajan everyone was invited with great enthusiasm they made all the arrangements for bhajan and mahaprasad the prasadam in the evening as the bhajan 
started suddenly the garland and swami's photograph started swinging as the bhajan picked up momentum it started swinging faster in the photograph one could see swami standing in the ground in front of prashanti mandir all of a sudden a little girl shouted swami 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 when her mother asked her as to what happened she said see swami is standing in front of me and asking where he was she pointed to the front and said that he had come out from the photograph on which the garland was swinging and was standing there everyone was wonderstruck and was standing there they were all wonderstruck yes as long as the girl could see swami the garland on the photograph kept swinging when he vanished it stopped swinging sage narada says when one contemplates on god's name incessantly an unending stream of devotion pours forth and fills the devotee's heart with bliss due to this he forgets body consciousness and completely gets immersed in divine love what a wonderful experience it is what a power of kirtan singing the glory of swami is adi purusha is the one who was there before is present now and will be there in the future also the divine he is the purusha the eternal charioteer who rides the chariot of the body the bhagavad gita in the fourth chapter sixth shloka clearly says though i am unborn and am of and am of a imperishable nature and though i am the lord of all beings yet ruling over my own nature i take birth through my own maya the presence is such a avatar is adi purusha and he has incarnated in human form by his own will during sri krishna avatar there are some people who are unable to understand his divine nature and thinking of him as a mere human disobey and disregarded him in this day and age too there are the ignorant who don't understand bhagwan baba's divinity and are and that definitely the losers a number of yogis and devotees who are seekers of knowledge and wisdom has experienced that sri chachasai is adi purusha when bhagwan baba was at hrishikesh in the ashram of swami sivananda he saved a yogi from drowning in the river near vasishta caves the yogi had invoked invoked god and his plea reach bhagwan baba bhagwan responded to his prayer and saved his life this incident illustrates that bhagwan baba is adi purusha being adi purusha he remembers the various births of his devotees during the times of every incarnation this story is from the life of shirdi sai avatar mrs lakshmi ganesh kapar de was an ardent devotee of sai nath he specially loved her and always showered his grace upon her when she offered food to him as naivedya offering he would eat it immediately once when 
माधवराव देशपांडे श्यामा आज दिम अबाउट इट ही सेट इन वन ऑफ अर अर्लियर बर्थ शी वॉज ए फैट काउ हु इल्डेड लॉट्स ऑफ मिल्क देन फॉर सम टाइम शी वेंट मिसिंग लेटर शी वॉज बॉर्न इन ए क्षत्रिय फैमिली एंड देन शी वॉज ए मर्चेंट्स वाइफ आफ्टर दिश शी वॉज बॉर्न इन ए ब्राह्मीन फैमिली आई एम सींग हर नाव एफ ए लॉन्ग टाइम सो लेट मी एंजॉय eating some food which she has cooked with so much love and let her also get the satisfaction that is the adi purusha nature of bhagwan baba she such a say is the divine mother and is the primal primal cosmic energy the shakti aspect of adi purusha according to the boon conferred on sage bharadwaja lord shiva decided to incarnate thrice during kali yuga according to shirdi sai was shiva avatar prati sai is shiva shakti avatar and prem sai will be shakti avatar since bhagwan baba is shiva shakti incarnate the source of all power the adi shakti dwells in him he has given darshan to several devotees as adi shakti in 1948 swami declared his avatar hood thereafter during the navratri festival the devotees used to worship him every day and in the evenings they used to take him in a procession seated in a decorated palanquin during this time he gave darshan to several devotees in the form of adi shakti the devotees used to be blessed with darshan in many forms of devi ma the mother like jagan mohini tripura sundari durga mata meenakshi vishalakshi kamakshi so on so forth later this festival changed its form and swami blessed the lady devotees with the opportunity of chanting the lalita astotram shatanamavali and kumkum archana from 1961 swami started organizing sri veda purusha saptaha gnana yagna During this week long celebration there was veda chanting atirudra yaga japa homa sri chakra puja sahasra linga puja reading of sri mad ramayana sri devi bhagavata so the ever compassionate adi shakti rupini swami started ज्ञान यज्ञ एलॉंग द वर्शिप ऑफ दश पूजा दश पूजा और दश भुजा धारिणी श्री दुर्गा देवी एंड ब्लेस्ड एवरी वन दश भुजा मीनिंग द टेन आर्म्ड श्री दुर्गा देवी एंड ब्लेस्ड एवरी वन सिंस आदि शक्ति is in the form of divine mother she is full of love and compassion towards her devotees and instantly rushes to their aid here is an enlightening example after prashantalayam was established in one instance while talking to his devotees swami suddenly stated twisting and turning his body and became stiff like wood on seeing him that way the devotees were shocked and felt very anxious swami was in that condition for about 10 minutes then he awakened slowly and with a soft smile sai mata the mother sai said a lady devotee of mine in america 
was suffering from labor pains. In order to free her, I had to rush there. I blessed her and the baby daughter and returned back. A few months later, the lady came for Swami Darshan and this incident was confirmed. On 20th October 1965, during the inaugural function of Prashanti Vidwan Mahasabha, Swami announced that he was Adi Shakti. He said, earlier Devi Bhavani has had blessed Raja Shivaji with a sword and ordered him to protect the Hindus. Today, this Shiva Shakti is giving these pundits the weapons of fortitude and I order them to go into the world to carry out the mission of the revival and upliftment of dharma or righteousness. Bhagavan Sri Satsai Baba is Shiva Shakti incarnate. Before taking human form, he had given auspicious indications about his advent. After birth and right from his childhood, he has performed many miracles. The special qualities of Sakshatkar, Realization, Chamatkar, Miracles, and Paropakar, Benevolence, which are present in divine incarnations, have been prominently seen in Swami from his childhood. The seven special characteristics which can be seen only in an avatar are prosperity, knowledge, non-attachment, glory, creation, maintenance, and dissolution, and all this can be seen embodied in Bhagavan such as Sai Baba. By his sankalpa, the divine will, he has performed many miracles which are beyond the scope of science, but it making a dead person come alive or being present in two places at the same time. These things are possible only through Swami's divine will. Here are two examples which give a glimpse of His divine qualities. Once Swami's ardent devotee, Sri Panduranga Diksha, had gone to Puttaparthi along with his family during the Sarah celebration. His daughter Josna used to participate in the morning Nagar Sankirtan with a lot of zeal. One morning, when some of her friends came to wake her up, she said, Today I had a wonderful dream. In that dream, Swami materialized a crystal japamala and put it around my neck. The same morning, Swami called the Dikshit family for an interview. He materialized a crystal japamala exactly like the same one shown in the dream, gave it to Josna and said, your dream has come true. From this incident, we can clearly understand that Swami controls our lives, not only in waking state, but also in the dream state of our mind, and is a divine incarnation with wondrous powers. The other example is that of Mr. Walter Cowan. He suffered from a massive heart attack and was moved to hospital in Madras immediately by his wife, Elsie Cowan, with the help of Mrs. Ratanlal and others. On arrival, the doctors declared him dead. His nose and ears were blocked with cotton wool. The body was covered 
and was transferred to another part of the hospital. It is the morning, 25th December, 1971. Swami responded to Mrs. Cohen's prayers and went to the hospital and restored him to life. Mr. Cohen, who was declared dead by the doctors, was resurrected. But at that time, physically, Swami was giving a discourse to a gathering of devotees somewhere else. When Mr. Cohen was found to be alive, the doctors conducted some tests on him. At that time, he was not only found to be in perfect health, but there was no trace, no trace of the severe diabetes or any other illness from which he had been suffering earlier. So Swami not only blessed him with rebirth, but he awarded him a new life, free from all diseases which disappeared with the death. All this happened only due to the wondrous, miraculous power of Swami's Sankalpa, Sairam, meet later.